do you distinguish when you think about salaria between which glands produce saliva, whether it's during uh, the resting state or when they're eating? Because we have the parotid glands, the submandibular, the, the sublingual glands. How do you think about that? Does that come into the clinical picture? It, it does. Uh, so obviously our parotids, the largest gland we have, and so we'll talk a little later about um, botulinum toxin injections for this. It's a big target, and it's fairly uh, uh, consistent in different people versus submandibular gland uh, right under here, usually in the posterior third, just on the inner table of the mandible. It's a, it's a much smaller gland uh, and different type of saliva, and then we do have the sublingual. So we have these six pairs, and we have these hundreds of, of minor salivary glands. The parotid produces the more serous type of saliva, more protein rich, because that's where amylase is coming from. The sublingual is all mucin, uh, so it's mucus is coming from there. And the submandibular is really a combination of both, some serous and some uh, mucin production as well. The saliva we produce when we're eating, uh, so in, in response to a meal, that's stimulated state, that's all coming from our parotid. Most of the unstimulated state is coming actually from our submandibular. Um, so it is important in terms of size. Uh, the submandibulars are variable in their size. It can vary almost tenfold and in their location. The product is more consistent size and location, so it does make an easier target. And, and these uh, salivary glands are under the control of the autonomic nervous system. Correct. And it's a sympathetic and parasympathetic innervations that lead to what, the release of acetylcholine that causes these cells to produce saliva. Right, so the parasympathetic is really what drives the production of saliva and tells the, the glands to secrete saliva versus the sympathetic is important for telling the ducts to relax and allow the flow of saliva. So I think there's more of a parasympathetic and muscarinic uh, type of uh, receptor that we want to hit. Right. So it's a different uh, acetylcholine receptor yes. in the glands. It's the muscarinic one. Yes. Not the, uh, Not nicotinic, the nicotinic that we It'll think about in muscles. Muscle yeah. For other botulinum toxin. So when we think about Parkinson's disease as being a widespread synuclein degeneration, and it involves the enteric nervous system, and we know it involves the autonomic nervous system, We've almost overlooked the idea that the autonomic nervous system in Parkinson's is not only responsible for problems with bladder and blood pressure, but really for, for saliva production. Right, but in this case, it actually is reducing it. It's reducing it, it, it too. Which is right. beneficial, it's yeah. just not reducing it enough uh, because they're swallowing, still can't keep up with this reduced flow. so slow. 